large language models are powering virtually everything from chatbots to internal co-pilots. But ironically, most engineering teams have no idea what's really happening inside them. When costs spike, latency creeps up or results get weird, you are left guessing because traditional money tools were not built for this. And it means that you're flying blind of performance, cost, and reliability. And when all of this happened, the first question teams get is, why? But most teams can't answer that fast enough to fix it. Round cover says they can. Today, I'm talking with, once again, Or Benjamin, VP of product at Ground Cover to learn more about their brand new LLM observatory launch. We are going to dig into how they're using ABPF to give you a live under the hood view of AI systems and why seeing LLM metrics right next to your traditional observatory data could change how you run and manage AI in production. Or let's start simple. When you say LLM observability, first of all, what does it mean? And what exactly are teams able to observe now, which they were not able to observe in past? Yeah, so if you think about all the rage today, it's all things LLM, it's all things AI. And as more and more companies move out their offerings to include LLMs in production, they need the set of tools to be able to understand what's happening there. In a lot of cases, LLMs will be a black box for them. You send out a request to a third party, OpenAI, Anthropic, you get something back. And we uh, help our customers understand what's basically there, how much of such requests they have, what is the corresponding latency, what issues are there, you know, what is the quality over there? Are there hallucinations in place? Are you having issues? even being able to connect to the third party offerings of open AI and Anthropic and, and whatever other uh, integration you have there, there could be a lot of issues that happen. And just like every other part of your production application, you need to be able to have the same level of visibility here. In many cases, even more because it is such a black box type approach. Interestingly, you have built this around ABP, which is a foundational technology at ground cover, which is also unusual in the AI space because it's all about Linux kernel. Can you talk about how does eBPF help you see things other monitoring solutions cannot see? eBPF for us is the ability to basically set a spotlight on all of the customer's data. We're able to see absolutely everything that happens in their environment. And up until recently, what we've been seeing is all of the traditional kind of the tech stack you see. And what was really interesting is because our eBPF sensor, it is at such a low level, it is at a kernel level, it's able to pick up all of that traffic. We basically saw that we were able to go and see all of this communication to third party LLMs out of the box. You're able to go and see that without any instrumentation, no setup, no blind spots, no places that you may have potentially forgot to do that. Um, and we're also seeing for our customers in general, people are not instrumented in this world. People aren't thinking about it. People aren't necessarily at a stage yet where they're mature enough to take the best practices they've learned in other areas and bring it over to the LLM world. So the really cool part about eBPF is that if you have it in your environment, you'll be able to go and with the ground cover sensor, pick up everything over here and translate that to meaningful metrics and traces that the customers could use. I won't put it on AI teams. All of us are obsessed with performance, but when it comes to AI, costs can get out of hand very quickly. LLMs can quickly become a budget sink. How are you helping teams track cost along with performance? 100%. So when you think about the challenges associated with LLMs, I think cost is up there with quality to a large extent. You could get really pricey very, very quickly if you don't have the right tooling in place. So what we're able to do is use the data that we identify through eBPF, all of those requests out to your third-party LLM provider. And we're able to, on each and every one of those, tag things like the token count, both on the input and the output, you know, and translate that to cost and then aggregate that into different metrics that look at it, not just at a individual request, but also aggregated by provider. So, you know, open AI, the different models they have, 
then bake it down further by service that's actually making those requests. And by translating that into metrics like that, you could go in and set up different boundaries and alerts like you do with uh, other parts of your application. And you'll be able to go and get a uh, alert each and every time something is happening within your application has changed meaningfully over there. So, you know, prompts could change very, very quickly. People could go and change the request that they have. And even small development changes over there could have really meaningful impact both on, um, you know, performance elements, but even more so on the cost element because you don't really know what that is going into it. Have you seen teams use these insights to make design decisions, not just budget fixes? We're seeing the observability data being used in a number of different ways. So there's the budget conscious element over here. There's the tracking of how is your cost footprint and making sure it stays in line. But you're also able to go and see the quality of the information that's returned. You're able to go and see the actual prompts. You're able to see, are you giving your customer a good solution? You're able to connect it back to all of the requests that happened prior. And because ground cover as well is a single SKU company, you pay one time, you get all of our different product lines, you could go and connect everything. And you could go from the front end all the way through to the uh, LLM requests and the back end requests and everything happen over there and be able to go and see where your potential latency is, issues are, where are you getting error rates, where you get rate limiting, where do you have any additional problems that you could imagine and really get very, very deep about what do you need to fix over there. What is interesting about your approach is that you are showing LLM metrics in the same view as CPU, memory, and network. We are all used to it. What kind of new patterns or problem does that approach reveal which siloed or dedicated AI dashboards don't show? Yes, yeah, so I think it's exactly like you just said. It's having everything in one place. It's being able to correlate between all of these different elements. Within observability as a whole, we've seen that we want a single place where all of our developers could go and use as their knowledge base, be able to know that that is where they're going to. And unfortunately today, you know, there's four or five observability solutions on average in large customer companies. And we want to make sure that that isn't further uh, exacerbated by LLMs as well. So. A developer that goes in and wants to see the LLMs that were running and see the prompts and see if it gave a good result and, you know, different metrics over there also wants to look at what was happening at a applicative layer. How many requests were there? What happened right before? What happened after? Were there any errors elsewhere? Was there latency within the entire flow? Were they getting stuck during other parts of the process? Connected back to the inframetrics, CPU, memory, was it high over there? Were there issues that were impacting it that doesn't have anything to do with the LLMs, but the entire user journey that the customer had over there was in turn uh, negatively impacted. So having everything in one place is your inframetrics, your, your APM metrics, your tracing, your front end monitoring, your logs, and your LLM solution. That to me is the future where companies are going to want to go. You want less tools, not more tools. And the world is changing so quickly that unless we, we try to focus on that, it's going to go and become a, a very difficult situation moving forward. Is it possible for you to share an example where this cross view approach avoided a serious outage or spend? Yeah, absolutely. So we had an example where a customer uh, basically deployed something in which the LLM's calls began to be uh, more and more frequent. As a result of that, there was an additional cost that was incurred. And at a certain point, there's also rate limiting that was happening. So you have a uh, two aspects here, both an increase in the dollar spend that you have, but also a reduced uh, experience that the, their end customers will receive. So you're able to identify both those things very quickly and be able to to flag them. And I think like anything, the speed at which you could solve these things is the key element here. We know things are changing so fast. Things will break. You know, there will be challenges over here and having the right observability in place will make sure that you could deal with that on the fly and get to a resolution as quickly as possible. Now, when you work with these teams, have you ever heard where they said, 
hey, that was the single biggest blind spot that they were not able to see earlier, but now they're able to see and monitor today. Yeah, I think we're seeing that everywhere. So there's a lot of teams that as we rolled it out, they're suddenly realizing just how much they were feeling that pain of not having a cover, being able to have that view to what's happening, where it's happening from, how many requests are going out, what the cost is. It's being used in a number of different ways. And, you know, people are loving that you suddenly have light on that blind spot. Now let's talk about security because that's a very critical topic. What kind of visibility does this give into LLM traffic or misuse? That's a really good question. So in, in general, we're able to see all of the LLM traffic, including the uh, request, all of the different prompts that were sent out, and then the response from the third-party provider. So using that power, we're able to do things like identify PII on top of that data. We're able to go and to connect that back flag it and be able to show that to our customers. We're able to then allow them to quickly and easily ascertain where there could be potential risk over there. Uh, and at the same time, because ground cover very much believes on keeping all of our data, all of our customers' data within their specific environment, the bring your own cloud experience that we provide, all of that really risky data that could be going out to a third-party SaaS provider in the sense of observability is all staying on the customer side. I think that's really cool as well. And it's something that more and more uh, companies are going to want as they deal with this extremely um, PII intensive data. You folks have just made this announcement. So it's a bit early, but if I ask you, where do you see LLM observability is heading as AI applications are not only becoming more and more popular, but they're also becoming more and more complex? Yeah, um, I think like with anything in AI, being able to look forward is is a challenge that we we have. I you know spoke to you a few months back and everything was about MCP and putting it out and, and kind of you know, everything has shifted so quickly and, you know, the innovation becomes the standard in such a quick manner that it's difficult for me to look forward in that regard. I think there's going to be a lot in the world of the quality that the customers have, a lot of LLM as a judge elements where you're able to go and to provide a really good solution around what type of experience does my end customer get that today, you know, is not there as an industry yet. It's very uh, early stages, but I think it's going to evolve very, very quickly. We're going to see that happen at incredible uh, rates of evolution. Um, I'm also just really excited to kind of go and have LLM observability as become a standard. I think because we're so early within the technology today, um, we're not seeing people going and using those tools at scale. We're not people seeing people going and really being able to leverage that data. And I think, you know, just the widespread use is going to be really interesting and to be able to see how that, you know, benefits our customers and the industry as a whole. Before we wrap this up, I would love to hear your thoughts on there are teams at different stages in their AI LLM adoption journey. Some have maturity, some are just starting now. For teams who are just putting LLMs into production, what is the one thing you would tell them to start monitoring on day one? Yeah, so for teams who are just starting out with LLMs, I think it's first and foremost about experimenting, making sure that you're trying to solve the right problems that give meaningful value to your customer while balancing the complexity. Sometimes, you know, we want to go really, really far in what we offer our customers, but you need to figure out your strategy to how do you scale that? How do you build, you know, fundamental building blocks that layer and each little piece gives value along the way. We rolled out a number of different uh, features that use AI over here uh, at ground cover. And I think kind of approaching it from a perspective of, building blocks and each one makes the set better and you're moving towards building a house, which is your, you know, future AI strategy slash agentic solution. That for me is, is like the general approach in terms of the observability piece. Just do it. You know, there's the solutions out there, you know, ground cover is here for you. There's no reason to not have it from day zero. It's easy enough. It's something that 
you will not understand how much value it gives until you see it in place. If not, you're blind. And, you know, when we're iterating so quickly and we're going and making sure that we're optimizing around velocity, being blind is the last thing you want to be. Or thanks for walking us through how eBPF is reshaping LLM monitoring and also giving teams a real window into performance, cost, and reliability. As usual, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Once again, thanks for your time today. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Now back to our audience. If your company is solving a big challenge, AI or observatory space, it's time for you to get in touch with us. We would love to hear and share your story with our audience. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss the next conversation. Thanks for watching.